many of you guys think the instance of default are going to go up in the next 12 to 18 months? Okay. How many of you think that the industry, the recovery industry, is prepared or capable of handling an increase? Okay. It's interesting because there's a large belief. I'm going to make a prediction based on the fact that we have lenders and people in the industry in the room, <laughs> that the default rate's going to go up. I used some data points to do that. How do you guys spot? So, so this whole conference, I keep hearing everybody throw around the term uh, modeling, and so forth. How do you spot somebody who is truly a modeler or truly somebody who thinks about predictive analytics? I'll tell you how. Son comes to them and says, Dad, can we go to the movie today? The probability of that is low, son. Okay, how many of you guys have ever done that, said that? Okay. Honey, did you lock the door? Well, we're only going to be gone for an hour, and the probability of somebody coming in the house is low. Have you ever used that term? Okay. That's how you spot a model. If they don't talk in terms of probabilities and percentages of outcomes and likelihoods of conditions, they're not a model, or they're just a guy or a girl out of doing their job. Okay, modelers, they can't help it. They think that way. It's really odd. So anyway, I do fit in that category, and it's really strange to hear my kids say, Dad, that was a very random statement. <laughs> Where did they get that? I don't really know. <laughs> Predictive analytics and auto recovery. The prediction of asset recovery. Who would have thought that maybe we should try and predict the likelihood or the ability to recover a vehicle. Anybody ever thought about that? Okay, well, I've been in this industry for six months, and I thought, why hasn't anybody done this? So I decided to do it, okay? So we're gonna talk about that today. Let me give you a little bit of my background. Uh, it has been 10 years since I've actually been out in a venue like this talking to people. In 1998, I co-founded a small company as CEO called CoreLogic. How many of you guys know who CoreLogic is? Anybody heard of it? Uh, 2002, invented collateral risk scoring and ABM cascades. These two technologies are still in use heavily in the mortgage industry. 2005, created a mortgage lending data consortium, which was basically where the lenders contributed their data to a consortium. And that consortium was used to prevent fraud. It was used to help them benchmark themselves. In 2006, we're processing 70% of all the mortgages in the United States. Okay, that's pretty significant when you think about how many mortgages were being done in 2006. And by the way, the only 30% that we weren't touching was countrywide. How many of you guys know about the BFA countrywide fiasco? <laughs> <laughs> that was some of the worst paper in the marketplace, and it was a good chunk. Anyway, uh, 2007, beginning of 2007, sold for logic, 100% got out. Is that good news? Or do you guys think it was good news? Hmm. Maybe I had some predictive analytics. Okay. Uh, in 2005, then 2005, I thought the whole thing was going to collapse at the beginning of 2006. Okay. Now, the wonderful thing about predictive analytics is sometimes you can predict it, but you don't know how to win, right? So I thought it was going to get a little bit squirrely at the end of 2005. By 2006, I put our company up for sale. Still, everybody thought business was okay. I hadn't gotten too squirrely yet. And I was about a couple weeks from having a complete sign deal with the CFO from the company I was buying, killed over again. That was not fun. I had to start over, and in February of 2007, we sold the company, and I was sweating bullets. 10 years of retirement, I had to do a sample of how golf works. How many of you guys play golf? Can you predict the outcome of your game before you start? Okay. After you play enough rounds, you start to predict the outcome of your game before it starts. And I realized that the prediction of my outcome was not great. So I said, well, I better do something I can do a little bit better. And that is business with a predictable outcome. OK, before we sold CoreLogic in 2006, I actually created an analytic for the, for the auto finance industry. And it was an origination for uh, targeted analytic. And it was extremely well. It was being tested by one of the top three largest lenders in the country. And they said, this thing rocks. It's awesome. It's probably one of the best models we've ever seen. 
but we can't use it. And you think, oh, because of compliance or X, Y, Z, and otherwise. No, nope. wasn't it at all. It was because the duration of time for the origination was so short that they could not and would not put in the time lag that it would take to actually truly make the outcome from that. How many of you guys suffer from the result of that? Fast origination cycles, right? Really fast origination cycles. So even though you can have great predictive analytics on the front side, they don't go on the front side. FICO drives it off. Okay, FICO is a great short-term visible model. If FICO was wonderful, we wouldn't have had the problem we had in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? But it's a very short window product. Um, anyway, let's skip forward to 2017, pun intended. Uh, purchase company and asset recovery space called Google. Right, great. It's a routing software. It helps companies understand where things are going. Uh, interview different parties, talk to different people in this industry. It's new to me, but at the same time, I grasp this stuff pretty quick. Immediately realized this industry and the recovery space was in the new business. <laughs> so, why am I here today? I don't know why I'm here today, other than that I don't golf well. Okay? <laughs> people have asked me that at least 10 times in the last two days. I keep thinking, why am I here today? I have that good answer. But what I can do is say I'm here to change the auto recovery space. <laughs> Predictive analytics used in the recovery space well, meaning hundreds of millions of dollars to the major lenders, can mean millions of dollars to the service industry. Can we predict the likelihood of a vehicle being recovered? That's a good question. And if we can, why don't we use that knowledge? So one of the things we always focused on when I was in CoreLogic was, great, I've got analytics, I've got numbers, I can produce numbers, and numbers, and numbers, and numbers, and numbers, but what do you do once you have it? Do you guys find that to be the hard part? Who finds that to be the hard part? Your team produces tons of that numbers, and you go, now what do we do? Well, it's one of the hard parts. So the answer, can we predict auto recovery? Yeah. I can predict auto recovery. I've spent the last three months building data uh, from my historical days and data from all over the place, building data, data, more data, more data. And I can tell you, yes, for a fact, I can predict the likelihood of recovery from nothing more than the address you send me. You say, how is that possible? I'll tell you a little bit. Okay, we can do it quite well. So let's just talk about this chart a little bit so you guys understand what the detail is. What I did is I have a score. It's, how many of you guys, if, if you ever talk to anybody who says, oh, we do predictive analytics, we do all kinds of predictive analytics, ask them this question, what software do you use? And if they go, uh, then they know. Okay, uh, we're talking about statistical software, SPSS, SAS. Uh, there's a handful of others. I use about three when I'm doing this because some of them do a great job of teasing out variable importance, variable by uh, different uh, elements of variable behavior, whether it's bimodal, all these different topics that you've probably not heard in this whole entire conference. But this first bucket, I stratified them into six different buckets, which represents about 16% of the population of assets that are out for recovery at any given point in time. And if you were in the sixth bucket, which is a good bucket, you have about 43% probability of being recovered. If you're in the one bucket, which is another 16% of the population, you have about a 15% probability of being recovered. That's pretty significant. That means the vehicles in that top group have three times more likelihood than the bottom group. The top group uh, has two times more likelihood than the bottom group, and so forth and so forth. What does that mean? Okay, so great. This is wonderful information. I had a lot of fun making it. And then I stepped back and said, what the hell do you do with this? What do you do with this knowledge? How do you use this to conduct business? Okay. So let's talk about lenders for research. If you know that you can't, you're going to have a hard time picking up a vehicle early stage versus an easy time, should you change your actions? Lenders out there, how many of you think you should change your actions in early stage? How many of you say, hell with it, we're just gonna keep doing the same thing? 
Okay, wait, I know there's some lenders out there. I know who you are. If you don't start raising your hand, because that was all, that was a one no, yes, no, zero, one type question. I'm an analytics guy. Nobody raised their hand. Okay. So let's ask that again. Lenders, should you change your behavior in early stages? Who knows? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Those who say don't do anything different. Any of them? Um, it, it was interesting. I was told somebody this last night uh, when I was at CoreLogic and everything was getting a little swirly. Uh, Wells Fargo said, gosh, we had these predictive factors and we were calling people left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. They said, you know what we did is we sent them a letter that said, hey, if you call us, we'll send you a $10 Starbucks card. They said they had so many calls coming in that they, they didn't have enough people to handle it. Okay? And they said, what? You know, we, we were having these people, we've been having these people call nonstop. And they were engaged, right? Engaged clients. So anyway, that's just one way of thinking about it differently. Skip folders, recovery, resource management uh, practices. Um, you know, how soon do you set it into a skip? When do you manage the expectations of agencies and what their um, and updates and recovery? If I have a bucket of one with a 15% chance of recovery, should I have the same expectation from the agency as I do if they have a 45% chance of recovery? Does it make sense to have the same expectation? Run it 10,000 times, damn you. That's a great expectation. Is it going to work? No, it's not going to work. Okay. But on the other side, if I have a bucket of sense, maybe it does make sense to say, keep running it. Please, keep running it. You're going to get it. How many of you know that, okay, wait, so I asked this question as well, but how many of you would think that somebody with a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, are they easier or more difficult to recover from? How many of you think it's easier? How many of you think it's more difficult? Okay, it actually mathematically proves out to be more difficult. You're more likely to recover it, but it's more difficult to get the vehicle. You're gonna have to run it a lot more times. Why? They probably have garages. I don't have the exact reason why, but I can tell you the math, the prediction. Okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, folders, uh, agencies, how can they use this knowledge? Obviously, they have a resource management issue. Um, I personally, if you were to ask me if defaults went up X, I think the agency side of the world is going to get crushed, to be honest with you. Because from what I understand, what I've the communications I've had, they are running on thin margin, and they're running at capacity right now. So what that means is if it increases, they have to add more resources, but they're running on thin margin, okay? What do you have to have to make money? You have to have money to make money, so where are you gonna get the investment? 